It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. Teach me your holy ways, O oh Lord, so I can walk in your truth. Teach me your holy ways, O oh Lord, and make me wholly devoted to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. Open my eyes so I can see the wonderful things that you do. Open my heart up more and more and make me wholly devoted to you all. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. All of the days of my life. All of the days of my life. That is our heart cry today. That we want to follow our Lord Jesus Christ with all of our hearts, with all the days of our lives. Uh, good morning to all of you. Good to see uh, Calvin. Um, and, uh, and the rest of us who are gathering here in person in, uh, in the sanctuary. Well, uh, we'll talk more about that a bit later. I want to also take this time to welcome all those who are joining us online uh, from various places. Uh, wherever you are today, just focus uh, this next um, hour or so that we are together uh, without being any distractions and uh, look into the Lord's Word and hear the prayers of his people and uh, sing with all of your heart uh, and uh, then tune into what the Lord has to say when the time comes to listen to his word. So with that, would you stand up together? Uh, I'd like to read from um, 34, uh, Psalm 34, and then we'll pray and uh, we'll worship the Lord. Psalm 34, uh, verses um, uh, 11. Come, my children, and listen to me, and I will teach you to fear the Lord. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. So the Lord hears the cries of our heart today as we uh, sang that. So let's come in this time to the Lord, dear Father. We thank you. Here we are in your presence. Uh, Lord, uh, keep us away from every evil and distraction, from everything that uh, displeases you today. Uh, and all the days of our lives, Lord, we want to commit ourselves to follow you, to serve you, to live for you. So listen to the cries of, of your people today. And uh, Lord, we commit this service to you. And uh, God, we pray that your anointing would be upon us and minister to us according to our needs. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's look around and uh, uh, welcome one another. Just give uh, a round of applause or just uh, wave and uh, say, love you. And whatever you want to say, we are happy to be in the house of God. Amen. Brother John, yeah. 
Savior, I come, quiet my soul, remember, redemption's hill, where your blood was spilled, all my ransom, everything I once held dear, I count it all as loss. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, and lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me. I tempted and tried fully human the Lord became flesh for my sin and death now you're risen everything I once held dear I count it all as lost Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, and lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me, lead me to the cross. To your heart, to your heart, lead me to your heart, lead me to your heart, lead me to the cross where your love poured out, Lord, lead me to my knees. Lord, and lay me down, rid me of myself, I belong to you, oh, lead me, lead me to the cross where your love poured out, bring me to my knees, Lord, and lay me down, rid me of myself, I belong Oh, lead me, lead me to the cross. Amen. With that, uh, we'll go before the Lord. You may be seated uh, before the Lord in prayer. Uh, as Tom uh, going to lead us in prayer, I want to give uh, one uh, praise report uh, on Wednesday uh, in our prayer meetings. We were praying for one of my friends, uh, Jennifer, uh, who had Lord been uh, suffering with COVID and uh, all kinds of complications, had been put in the ICU and all that. Uh, and we prayed and uh, many, of our, many other people were praying too. So I got a news from uh, her husband, Lord Sam, saying that she's out of danger. She's in a regular ward now just for for some care and all that. So just continue to pray uh, for uh, for those we are praying on Wednesday nights. Keep up the prayers and anything else the Lord might have uh, you pray today as a, uh, as a Tom leads us. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn. 
you actually beca became the curse for us. A anybody who hung on a tree, mm -hmm. according to the Old Testament, was cursed. We, we thank you that you, you decided to be our curse, to take our sins, to take that our responsibility away from us because we couldn't do it ourselves. We thank you for Jesus and his act as, as the Lamb of God to take away our sins. So we mm -hmm. just praise you for that and, and, and thank you for that. We pray for, for needs among us. We think it's Jennifer. We pray your hand will be upon her and, and completely heal her and, and have her be able to uh, leave the hospital sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. We pray for others who have needs like that for mercy. We continue to pray for her for healing, that you would touch her life and, and uh, for the uh, nerve pain and also the cancer she's endured, that you might uh, heal her completely and, and be with her. Lord, we pray as the people that we um, might represent you well, that uh, as people look at us, they might uh, not see us as individuals, but see you in us, that we might remember that to love others, but that's, a, that's, what, we, that's what we need to do and, and uh, to be able to give a testimony to you and, and tell what you've done in our lives. We just pray for that. Mm -hmm. We pray for courage during these days that uh, you might uh, help us to step out when we have opportunities and when we meet people. These are divine appointments you put in our way and even with all the talk of the, the, the virus, that, that we might uh, be courageous people and not uh, uh, wither back, that, that we might step forward and, and be known for that yes. rather than being um, uh, stepping away from all these different things. We pray that for a new believers as, as a church that we might have an impact for you, mm -hmm. that we not just come here to worship, which we do willingly, but we also are uh, in the business of, of seeing people come to know Christ, that we pray you would use us in that that area that we might be willing to uh, put our lives in the line for that. We pray also, Lord, for um, uh, individual people. We pray for Keith, who's had a tough week. We pray you'd be with his physical needs and encourage him. We pray for Michael Weinstein as well. We pray for Lori LeBeau. You'd help her to be able to find an apartment. You would meet those needs. We pray for others that are looking for jobs, that you would encourage them and walk, walk with them. And, and Lord, we pray that we might remember that we're not, uh, uh, going to be absolved or, or taken away from problems or difficulties or physical pain or, or problems with other individuals at work or in our neighborhood, but you would walk with us and you would stand next to us and give us the words and the spirit to deal with all these different things so we would just look to you and, and ask that you would work in our lives in that way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 few announcements uh, before we go further. Um, our media team is uh, looking for volunteers to help them with uh, um, running the live stream or doing PowerPoints uh, and uh, or uh, just doing the video, audio uh, equipment and, and sound and things like that. So if you are, if you have those skills, uh, please uh, join, uh, uh, meet with Ron uh, afterwards. Uh, I could explain the, what we have. Because we want to make use of this digital uh, technology that we have to be more impactful and effective in communicating the gospel. Um, so just keep that in mind. And uh, we have been following the, the news trends and uh, uh, looks like the COVID-19, uh, things are slightly getting improved. Uh, some may say more, some, are, some say less, but uh, things are really getting moving in the right direction uh, with uh, vaccinations and all that. And um, so uh, it is time if you are uh, not having any of those symptoms, you're feeling okay to come, you're well and uh, you're able, I want to invite you to come to. Uh, Worship the Lord in person, and we thank God for all those who are here. I know some of you are all following uh, on the live stream, uh, but let me let me encourage you. There's nothing can replace us coming together in person in worshiping the Lord. Do you agree with that, all those who are here? Amen? Yeah, we know we need that connection, that human connection. Uh, uh, we are meant for that. We're not to be all alone, locked up in our own homes, 
COVID has kept us away for almost a year now, almost coming to a year that uh, many things have been uh, halted and hindered. But I believe it is time for us. I just want to encourage those uh, if, as you feel comfortable. We are making everything for, uh, uh, possible here, right? Uh, and Kevin, how are we doing? Well, yes, we're doing. He, we put big thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, we do our best to keep this place safe and we, because we care for uh, not only our members, but the community members as well. Um, so as you come in, maintain those uh, protocols, keep in masks as we do. Uh, and uh, if, you're not a, if you're a family, sit together. If you're not from the same family, uh, sit separately. Um, then uh, there's so much uh, space we have here too. Okay. And uh, the Sunday morning Bible times are going the same. Things are, they're having a lot of uh, wonderful discussions, women and men and, and the teens. And also the young adults are meeting, I've heard, uh, on uh, Monday evening. So, so Kevin and others, uh, Ashley, a few others are getting together with Pat. So join those meetings as well. Um, Last Sunday, we have started uh, a project called uh, Hope Hand Sanitizers Project, I, an outreach project, thanks to uh, Je Jeff and Laura, uh, who have presented this, and then they are also uh, funding this uh, project. What they did was some number of hand sanitizers, different sizes, uh, with the scripture that says, this is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. These days, many people are struggling for connections and uh, difficulties people are going through and wondering, does anyone care for us? Uh, we want to send a message to all those who are listening to us online and uh, for our friends and neighbors and uh, in our community, we say, Hope Church cares for you. Hope Church prays for you. And we want to reach out to you in any way possible. Um, and uh, so this is one way we can say to our friends and neighbors and our postmen and others to say, hey, we care for you. We've been praying for you. So would you take as many hand sanitizers as possible? There are plenty over there. Uh, give it out to your colleagues and your neighbors and, uh, and uh, let them know that we are praying for them. And uh, so with that, uh, we... Uh, remind us of our tithes and uh, offerings, that if you have brought those uh, things, uh, our offerings and tithes, please leave them in the box at, at the end of the service. And, uh, or afterwards, you can mail in, or you can drop it at the office as well. Um, so let's uh, uh, hear what God has to say to us through his word, as Rhodes Pierre will Read from uh, Psalm 51. Psalm 51, New International Version. Have mercy on me, O God, according to unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgression. Wash away all my inequities and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness, even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with Aesop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my inequities. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgression, transgressors your way so that the sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You who are God my Savior and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. 
Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. May it please your to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifice of righteousness in burnt offering offers whole then bowls will be offered on your altar Psalms 51 New International Amen Amen Let's look to the Lord in prayer Dear Father here we are would you speak to us as we heard from your word, we open up our hearts and minds and ears. And Father, we pray that you would give us the grace of obedience. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I grew up in a Lutheran church where we had certain traditions every year. Uh, they follow what they call... Um, liturgical calendar, the church liturgical calendar throughout the year. When, this, when it comes to this part of the year, 40 days are set aside to remember, to reflect on the life and the crucifixion, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is called the Lenten season, um, which actually begins... On Ash Wednesday, which last Wednesday was that, and that will go up to 40 days leading up to Easter. Uh, many Western churches, denominations follow that, Catholics and Protestants. Uh, that is a time where we remember and reflect, pause and remember and reflect. And some of them fast uh, for 40 days, giving up various things. Um, so, but we as Baptists, somehow we haven't, been very observant of, of that Lenten tradition. However, I believe observing and meditating scriptures pertaining to the cross and uh, Christ's life and death and resurrection is not a bad thing, right? And uh, definitely fasting is not a bad thing. Uh, we fast on a regular basis, Wilma and I, we do weekly. Um, but if you don't remember these things during this particular season, we don't understand the, the, the value of Easter. We don't understand how to celebrate with uh, gratitude. Without these meditations and all, Easter becomes like any other commercial holiday. So in order for us to get to that place where we truly meaningfully celebrate Easter, I want us to go on to a journey this, uh, in the next coming weeks, for about six weeks or so. I want us to track the road of redemption. We are going to be on traveling on the road of redemption. Well, you might be wondering, Pastor, what is this road of redemption? Is it a novel or a movie or, or a, a video game? I think all that, those things are out there. But it is a journey of those who are longing for rest. Uh, and it is, though, it is a way for people who want to get their lives straightened up and move on in life. It is a road that it, those, for those who are looking for fulfillment and, uh, 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 and ultimate rest. Well, this road will take us through various stages. The first stage I'd like to pause and look at it is called regret. You might be wondering, Pastor, where are you going with this? Well, stay with me. You know, this is, first stage is regret. Whether you admit or not, we go through certain regrets in life. I don't want to raise your, ha raise your hands, probably you won't. But we all go through regrets in life, do we not? Some? More, some are more, some are less. According to Forbes, here are some common regrets that most people would go through. What are they? They regret working hard 
at the expense of family and friendships. Worrying about what others thought about me so much. Or regret about we haven't been happier more and have not taken life so seriously. Or letting my marriage break down. Um, or getting involved in uh, uh, the, the wrong group of friends. Or not spending more time with kids and not taking care of my health when I had the chance to do so. Or some, some may regret for not visiting a dying friend when, the, when they should have uh, wanted to do so. Or uh, they regret not being a, a good father or a, a better father or a mother or a better husband or our wife, and so on, so on. The list is more 25 or so. I just cut down a few. Well, we may relate to some or most of these things that I have mentioned. But we know we cannot change the past. Can we? Therefore, this is not the list for us to have a self-pity party. However, going forward, when we make certain choices and make wise decisions, we may live a life with maybe few regrets or no regrets at all. And that's what I want us to focus today, a life of no regrets. Psalm 51 verse 1 to 19. It's, uh, the theme is a life of no regrets and our first journey as we go for it, go through it. So as we begin our journey, let us look at this word, regret. I tell you, by the end of it, you won't regret it. So let's move into our, uh, our, our, uh, our study here. Regret is a feeling of sadness or disappointment caused by something that has happened or something that you have done or not done. In a polite way, when you say you regret something, what you're saying is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about it. Uh, so, what, what regrets do you have today? Any? Have you have any regrets? Um, uh, when we talk about regrets, there are two extremes. There are some people who say, I never regret of anything in my life because for them regret is a sign of weakness or is a sign of lack of confidence that's one extreme one people i would never but that there are those they are full of regrets they seem to be never be able to overcome the guilt and the shame of things that they had done way back maybe in childhood it kept, keeps haunting them. They, they'll never be able to be able to overcome uh, regret. So now, let me uh, give us just a, 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 a maybe a question here. Do you know who, or who, which nationality, which country in the world perhaps regrets more, or maybe the number one in regretting? Do you think? Uh, America wants to be the number one in everything, right? How about that? In the, when it comes to that, I don't know. Uh, some research has been done to find out well, who, who regrets often. Uh, and uh, for, with this research, uh, there were no statistics were available on Americans. But uh, in this research of about 1,000 uh, British people, they've done uh, on that, and then they found out here it says that uh, at least uh, uh, eight times a day, uh, they say sorry. The British would say sorry. Or some even say um, 20 times a day, they would say sorry. Well, when it comes to men and women, who do we think would regret more? Absolute silence. <laughs> you know, we... Well, the, again, the record says here, women tend to regret more often than men do. It's not that men don't regret, but they, it does somehow, women seem to be uh, more in touch with what's going on, perhaps, uh, in them, with them. 
Um, so is there anything wrong to say sorry? Yet it's so difficult for some to say sorry. To, it is okay. It, you have to. You should be saying so sorry, especially when, you, when it truly warrants an apology, something that we have done, right? So it is a common natural phenomenon that men go through this negative emotion called regret. But that brings me to another point to just to dwell a little bit here. Does God ever have regrets? Does he? Okay, how many say yes or no? Some say yes, some say no. Okay, can we just fight it out and see who comes out strong? <laughs> no. Yes or no? Okay, we'll see. Or how do we understand some difficult passages in the Bible that's like uh, Genesis, for example, 6th chapter 5 to 6. Turn with me if you have that Bible, if your Bible's uh, Genesis 5 to 6. It says here, The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted. Hmm. Oh, Kevin is wondering. Kevin, uh, let me rescue you in a little bit. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled. There's another passage in Samuel. It says, uh, the Lord regretted making Saul as the king. All right, okay. What is this regret of God? What is this all about? This scripture has puzzled many people uh, over a long, long time. The Bible's... Uh, Students, the Hebrew word that was used here, uh, nacham, translated as regret in the in New International Trans Translation, has range of meanings such as to pant, to breathe vigorously, to groan, to be sorry, to pity, to grieve, to feel repentance, to repent, etc. So here, do you see the idea of breathing deeply was a physical display of one's feelings, usually sorrow. So when God saw the wickedness in the man's heart, could we say perhaps he breathed heavily, breathed with, you know, with sorrow. He was, so he was sorrowful, full of sorrow about the fallen state of mankind. That's the kind of the sorrow rather than the way that we, we try to uh, interpret, I'm sorry I made a mistake, right? That's, that's how we know, I'm sorry I made a mistake. So God did not make a mistake by creating man. So that, not in that way, but he felt sorry for the state of man that was con continuously wicked and rebellious. Now, how did God react to this continual wickedness in the rebellion in man's heart? Well, he did like any loving father would do over his rebellious and always unwilling child. He moved with love and compassion towards man. So to bring his lost children back to himself, what did he do out of his love and compassion? He sent out angels, remember, to tell people. He sent out prophets to warn them the, 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 the uh, dangers of falling away. And in the end, what did he do? He sent his only begotten son, Lord Jesus Christ, to complete his mission of redemption. So are you staying with me? In one sense, the, that's not the way we understand God's regret. Not, not like our humans, because sometimes the, the my biblical authors uh, expressed in such a way that we could understand in human language and human terms. But that word, particularly if you read in Genesis 6, it was out of sorrow that God had towards man. But now, is regret in life necessary or not necessary? Okay, why? Why is regret 
necessary. That's what, yes, uh, Kevin, would you? Okay, all right. Necessary, right? Okay, we'll look, just let's build on that from what uh, uh, Kevin was saying. Uh, we, we, it may help us to understand our mistakes. So the redemption road, that's why I began, the redemption road begins with regret and ends with no regrets. Today in America, the dominant opinion on regret is essentially what? Get over it. Forget it. Don't even go there. Right? If you go to the, uh, the therapist, what would they say? But just leave it. Don't, don't, don't touch that. Don't even, even bother to uh, talk about that, right? Uh, here, uh, in, during uh, her, her TED talk, uh, Catherine uh, Scholz notes this way. She says, our cultural idea about regret is that lamenting things that occurred in the past is an absolute waste of time. But we should always look forward and not backward. And the best thing we can do is try to live a life free of regret. But it seems to be there's some good in that assertion, right? You know, it, it says, well, we should always strive to live a life of no regret. That's what uh, she was saying. And, um, and she, would, she says, there's no point in lamenting over the, your past failures. There is some truth in that as well. But in order to go forward, the Bible often takes us backward. Amen? To go back and find out what was going on at that point and deal with that. So going forward depends on going backward to identify and to uh, 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 reflect and to acknowledge our sin, what we have committed, and then asking God to forgive us and then take appropriate actions to go forward. Amen? So there is a point of coming back to regret, a point of admitting what has gone wrong in our own lives. But some people in our, we come across, they never admit that they were wrong, right? We have people in our leadership would say, I never asked God for forgiveness. Well, there, there, are, there are many things that we need to be coming before the Lord for asking for forgiveness because we will find out why that is uh, going forward here. So stopping and going back would help us to go forward. So in this passage that uh, we read today, um, we meet a man and we meet a broken man. His name, can anyone guess? King David, right. And this was actually a prayer. What was this prayer? Prayer, it began with regret. It began with what has gone wrong in his life. He was regretting. And by the end of the chapter, we see it seems to be ending in joy and redemption and in freedom. Well, in order to understand this, we need to know what's going on in the background. Uh, the background is found in um, 2 Samuel. When you go home, you could read that. Uh, 11 and 12 chapters if you read that. So, but let me paint the picture of what's going on. It was the springtime. What would happen normally during the springtime? The kings go out for war. Natural, right? If it is, everything is so cold, you're locked in. So it's spring, so they go out and fight battles. So when the kings were all fighting battles, what David was doing, instead of fighting battles, perhaps he was fighting his own inner battles. He was wandering on the rooftop on his palace. Somebody was wandering on the roof. And in, the, in his wandering, what did he see? He saw a beautiful woman named Bathsheba. And then he lusted after his, her beauty. And then we know, as you read the story, he ended up in bed with her. In other words, he committed adultery. Pause there. One sin. Adultery. Then when the news came to him that Bathsheba became pregnant, what did he do? He wanted to cover up his sin, right? Adultery. 
he got his uh, her husband Uriah was sent wrongly into the battle removed all the protection that was supposed to be have provided to Uriah and then he gets him killed adultery now what did he do a murder he became twice sinned against God he didn't recognize at that point he thought that was just natural but God looks down and looks and he watches all what's going on, right? As a loving father, what did he do about his son David? He had a plan. He sent a wise prophet named Nathan. You remember the story? And Nathan comes and tells a big story and then finally he confronts him with his sin. And then this is what uh, um, David says um, when he said, I have sinned against he says i have rebelled against the lord i have I've confessed i have sinned against the lord that's what he says um and then that was out of that this prayer was born so let's look at this prayer as we go into psalm 51 verses 1 and 2 what did he do he appealed to the mercy of god god you are merciful he appealed to God's unfailing love. And then he begged God to be compassionate towards him. And this is one thing he did. Very is commendable of him. David did not sugarcoat his, wrong, his uh, wrongdoings, his sin by saying wrongdoing. Instead of that, you know, what did he say? He said, I have rebelled against God. He rebelled against God and and he says, I've sinned against God and it is a rebellion against God. Now let me tell you, dear friends, any sin that we commit is, first and foremost, we commit against God. It is a rebellion against God and that is evil uh, in God's eyes. So let's move on. Verses 5 to 9. And then he admits that he was a born sinner. And then he committed sins right so is there anyone in this world according to this that that never sinned anyone here if you say if you lift your hand up and say yes i am you've just committed one sin that's called telling lies right so there is no one that's what the word of god says we all he says oh, my mother conceived me in sin from De from adam onwards everybody was born of sin you know we are born sinners therefore we commit sins so that's why he, re he was recollecting his sins and he says my sins have haunted me day and night there are some things that you have done perhaps are haunting you even today day and night my sins have haunted me day and night and then he says, David, if you look at reading this scripture, he says, his sin has robbed him of the joy that he once used to have in the presence of God. And he recognizes that he could not hide from God. Can he? Can you? And neither can he stand the exposure of God's light on his life. You know, when you come into a dark room, when you turn the light on, what happens? Everything is visible. Same way when we bring our hearts before the Lord, when he turns the light of the Holy Spirit upon us, can anyone stand before God without shame and guilt? So he says, I, you, you, you know, I, you keep my, my sins in front of you that he cannot stand that exposure. Now do you see the, the soul that is being anguished in this prayer as we keep on reading and then he says no matter what I do my sins cannot be washed away no matter what we do then the stain cannot be taken away so that at that point he realizes that he desperately needs God and so he begins to cry out to God this is the prayer uh, let's see if we can put that scripture out there uh, verses 10 to 13 
Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. Dear friends, this comes from the heart of a broken person. He was crying out to the Lord, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a royal spirit within me. And as he began to pray out that earnestly, you know, God will not reject such prayers. Amen? When it comes from that contriteness, when it comes from that brokenness, God will not reject that prayers. So it was a prayer of recognition. It was a prayer of asking God for mercy. It was a prayer of desperation. It was a prayer of repentance. And though, lo and behold, what happened? God listened to that prayer. And the, his tone began to change from verses 15 to 19. As we read that, is it, what began as full of regrets it seems to me that at the end of the prayer, he's lived a life of no regrets. Because he was saying, I will continue to praise God. You know, he, said, he rendered continual praise. And his joy was restored. And his, he offered sacrifices with what clear conscience he could bring those offerings and sacrifices to the Lord with clear conscience and as a result God was pleased with David when we think about when we read about uh, David's story we don't remember him for his adultery or for his murder what do we normally remember of David he was a man after God's own heart. That's how he normally is remembered by as we talk about, as we read about a man after God's own heart. Books were written about that on one sentence, a man after God's own heart. But how did he get to that place? He got to that place, I believe, because he began with regret. He admitted his own sin. And then he come to a place where he could live a life that was pleasing to God. So here we are, 21st century, sitting in Hope Church and following live stream. Is there something that we could learn from David? Well, some of you say, oh, no, 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 pastor, don't talk to me. I'm not like David. I never committed adultery. Well, ne never murdered anybody. Were you? Well, you know, it's something... When it comes to the, the way that how God deals with, when it come, though God is so loving, so merciful, so full of uh, uh, grace and compassion, but when it comes to sin, he has a very high bar. And from holiness, he sets up a very high bar. That is, adultery, when we think we go out and get involved in other people's wives or have sex outside of marriage, that is adultery. But the Bible says, even when we look at with lust over somebody, that is committing adultery in our hearts. There were times where men would have lust, lust after women. Well, nowadays we see all kinds of things happening. Women are lusting after women, men are lusting after men and, and women after men and oh there's a lot of bit confusion going on in this world but that is one way another way you say well I never committed murder, murder but the bar the word of God says if you, if you have anger in your heart or call somebody a fool what did you do you have become a, a murderer so what David did was in one way 
very uh, physical and uh, graphically. But you know what? In our own hearts, we may be doing similar things. So we are in the same place of David today. You and I can come to God and let the, when he turns that light upon your heart and upon my heart, we would say to God, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your Holy Spirit, from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me and restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Then something beautiful happens after, if you follow that, uh, uh, after, the, after that prayer, towards the end of uh, uh, 15, 51. Some of you here want to be witnesses for, we want to witness to, for God. You want to tell people about Jesus. You want people to come to know Jesus. When would that happen? What, what is the power? When can the power be released for our witness? It is found in verse 19. It says, then you will be pleased with sacrifice. Uh, uh, so, uh, verse 17. Let's see this one. The sacrifices you desire is a broken. Um, well, let me. Uh, thank you. It's uh, verse 17. Yes. Um, uh, sorry, verse, verse 13, after this prayer, verse, uh, uh, verse 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. And then it says what? Verse 13, then I will teach your ways to rebels and they will turn to you. So that's again, there's a power that we will get in our lives that through which people can come back to the Lord when we go through this phase of regretting and asking God to cleanse us and forgive us, then we will be powerful witnesses. So dear friends, this, this morning hour as we gather together, uh, John, would, John could come and lead us in a song, but I just want us to uh, stand up together wherever we are, just you and God. And those who are watching me outside from live stream, this is a very precious moment in your life the floodlight of the Holy Spirit is being turned upon your heart and my heart and in that light are there things that you have done or you, you're regretting today oh like David you could say God forgive me forgive me cleanse me here is my heart Lord you know, it is between you and God. We can't point fingers at anybody else right now. It is my heart. It is your heart. That's all matters before God. How is it today? Is it broken? Is it contrite? Well, you're in the right place. And God can wash you as white as snow today. Oh, just lift up our hands hands to the Lord, lift up our hearts to the Lord, inviting His Holy Spirit to come into our lives, to cleanse us, to make us holy, so that we could go on to live a life of no regrets. When we come to God with sorrow, that's the Word of God tells us, godly sorrow leads us unto repentance and, and that un, uh, unto salvation. And when we come to God in repentance and when God forgives our sins, we become new creation. We are born again. In other words, we can go on to live a life of no regrets because there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you say amen for that? There's no condemnation. But you got to start there. Feeling sorry and giving your heart to the Lord. So let's do that even as we sing this, this song and let the Lord uh, speak to us. Keep ministering His Holy Spirit to us.
Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Let me be to you a sacrifice. Let me be to you a sacrifice. And I will praise you, Lord. And I will sing of love. Come down. And as you search for your Jesus take my life and lead me on Lord you have my heart and I will search for yours let me be to you a sacrifice and I will to see the, the glory of God filling your heart today. Just lift up your heart to God and say, God, here am I. I want to come to you, Lord, and offer myself as a sacrifice. Oh, God will forgive us. And though he said the bar of sin is so high, his love is even greater. And with that, he will, he will come to us when we are broken in our hearts and contrite in our spirit. No matter what we've done, he is able to forgive us of that and cleanse us and make us all righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ. The redemption road begins with regret, but it can end with life of no regrets. And today, we want to continue to walk on that road of redemption. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done as we come back, Lord, next week, as we, throughout the week, as we ponder on this message. Lord God, may we... Uh, uh, May we stand in awe of you for all what you're going to do in our lives and through our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. The love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with us forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. And uh, don't forget to take these bottles. Uh, there are plenty out there. Give it to your friends. And we will see you next Sunday. Thank you.
Good job, Pastor.